Good evening viewers. I'm here to give you some basic information about actors and use cases. Before to that, let me introduce you myself. Well, uh, my name is uh, Shah and I've been working in IT for almost 16 years now. And most of the time, I've been working as a business analyst and as a project manager. To talk about my training experience, I have close to seven years of experience as a business analyst trainer and as a project management trainer. To talk about project management, I teach uh, CAPM and uh, PMP certification. Talking about my education, I'm an MBA graduate from San Jose State University, California. I do also hold a PMP certification since July 2007. It has been more than seven years now. I've been working as certified PMP based project manager. And right now I'm based in San Diego and I work as a project manager for an IT company. So in this session, so these are the different topics that will be covered. So we'll see what is an actor is. We'll try to understand actor based on a project. And when I talk about actors, there are two types of actors. One is primary in nature and the other one secondary in nature. Also, we'll try to understand primary and secondary based on a project. Also, we'll try to understand what are the use cases. Also, we'll try to understand use case based on a project. In this demonstration, I'll walk you through concepts with the ATM project as an example. But in regular classes with h 2 Infosys, student will experience six more projects which would be complex and real time. Before I really start uh, talking about actor, I want to make everybody understand what a system is from a BS context. We will be using the term system in many places throughout the course. So let me give a brief idea about system. System can be understood differently in a different context. But in business analysis context, most of the time system means the project and a design or you can say project and a development or the project for which you'll be acting as a BA. To give a better clarification, let me explain system with an example. Now let's say we have an investor, also means a client in a project context. Now the investor wants to open bank. That is, he wants to enter banking industry. So to make a bank operational, client would need an ATM obviously. And we all know ATM works with the help of a software. To make a long story short, the client wants to make an ATM software. To make an ATM software, he would need a developer. He would need the help of a QA. Likewise, he would need a BA. Now let's say you have been hired as a BA to work on this ATM software. So from your point of view, the project under development or the project for which you'll be acting as a BA would be the ATM software. So we can conclude saying the ATM software as a system. Now that we have pretty good understanding of system, let's move on to actor. So who is an actor or what is an actor? Let's see the definition. So the definition goes as someone or something that interacts with the system is called an actor. Let's say if we have to dissect the definition. So here the word interact is very important. Especially the word interact sounds as if it's a condition that should be met to be called something as an actor. In the meantime, what is interact? Interaction is something that happens between two entity. For example, when I take up an online class on webinar, there's an interaction between me and the student. For example, I'm teaching. In response, the students are learning. Students send me messages on the chat box. In response, I answer to those questions. I might write something on the screen in response the student can take notes. In short, interaction means one entity does something and other entity responds back in some way. Now that we have idea about system and interaction, let's move on to the main topic actors. For a second, let's see the definition of an actor based on ATM as a system. It goes as someone or something that interacts with the ATM is called as an actor. Can viewers think for a second what would be the possible actor for an ATM? Or can you think of something that would interact with the ATM? How about a customer? Can we call customer as an actor? Or do you think the customer would interact with the ATM? The answer would be yes. There is an interaction. Let's see what are those. Customer would insert a card. In response, the ATM would ask for the pin. So this single set of interaction is good enough to prove that there's an interaction between ATM and the customer. So we can conclude that customer is an actor. Apart from this, 
there are many more interactions. Example, the customer enters the PIN. In response, the ATM will ask how much money the customer wants to withdraw. Customer enters the amount. In response, the ATM dispenses the cash. Also, there is one more actor not many people would realize that. It is because not many people know how ATM would work behind the scene. To let viewers know, even bank that validates the card information is also an actor. So we'll see if there is any interaction between ATM and the bank. So what happens is, once the customer inserts the card, and once the customer enters the PIN, the ATM will send the card information and PIN information to the bank that has issued the card. So what a bank will do is, it will do an internal verification to check if the card and the PIN matches, and it replies back with an approval message. Okay, so in since there is an interaction between ATM and the bank, in that capacity, we can say bank as an actor. Going further into the details of actor, there are two kinds. One is uh, primary in nature, and the other secondary in nature called a secondary actor. So first, we'll see the definition of uh, primary actor. So it goes as primary actor is one who takes assistance or help from the system. Most of the time, users of system are called as primary actor. Example, in case of ATM, customer is a primary actor as the customer is using the system or taking the help of the system to withdraw cash or to deposit cash. As the customer is taking help, so in this case, customer is said to be a primary actor. So next we'll see secondary actor. The definition goes as, Secondary actor is one who gives assistance or help to the system. Example, in case of ATM, bank is a secondary actor as the bank is giving help to the system by validating the card and PIN information. Since bank is assisting the system, we can conclude bank as a secondary actor. Like I told before, this is a demo session. I will be walking through concepts with the ATM project as an example. But in regular classes with H2K Infosys, student will experience six more complex projects which would be real-time and complex which means you'll get to learn about the system about the actor primary actors and secondary actor based on six more complex projects let's move on to the next one that is use case what is a use case the definition goes as a use case describes a sequence of interaction between a system and an external actor that results in the actor being able to achieve some outcome of value keeping the definition aside let me teach you a simple method to identify the use case. From now, viewers, whenever you come across the word use case, the first word that should come to your mind is need. To make it complete, we can say need of an actor. Let's continue the example of ATM. See what are the use cases for ATM. So in case of ATM, we know that customer is an actor. So the point is, what are the use cases for customer? In other words, what are the needs of a customer. Now let's see some examples of use cases. Maybe we can say customer needs to withdraw cash. Also customer needs to deposit cash. Also customer needs to deposit check. As this is need of customer, we can say it as use cases. It doesn't end here. There is a way to express use cases as per industry standards. That is you express use case in two word format, wherein the first word is a verb and the second word is a noun. At the same time, that two word should carry the meaning. Together, we call it as verb followed by noun structure. And sometimes it is also called as use case name. Let's see how that would look. In the first case, we can modify to withdraw cash. In second case, we can modify to deposit cash. In the third case, we can modify to deposit check. Also, if you see here, withdraw is a verb and cash is a noun. That satisfies the industry standard. In the second case, deposit is a verb, cash is a noun. Again, that satisfies the two-word condition, also satisfies verb followed by noun condition. In the third case, deposit check, where in which the first word is a verb and the second word is a noun. So let me summarize the things what we learned and also show the logical flow of work. That is, very first thing what a BA should be doing is understand the system or understand the project that is to be developed. I call it as identifying the system. Secondly, a BA has to put effort in identifying the actors for the system. That is, a system can have one or multiple actors. It all depends on what a system meant to function. Thirdly, I would recommend BAs to identify 
primaries and secondaries that is a uh, actor can be primary in nature or secondary in nature as part of uh, step 3 a ba has to identify uh, actors which are primary and actors which are secondary next a ba has to identify use cases each primary actor may have one or multiple use cases it all depends on the role of the actor following a ba should build use case templates for each use cases which we will see in the next session like i have mentioned twice before this is a demo session where i gave a walkthrough of concepts with atm project as an example but in regular classes with h2k infosys student will experience six more project which would be complex in nature which means you'll get to learn about system about the actors about primaries secondaries based on six more complex project would like to take a minute to walk through regular class timings with h2k infosys we will be having three batches a day one in the morning uh, 10 a.m est one in the evening 8 p.m est one in the night 10 30 p.m est and the days would be tuesday wednesday thursday friday so it will be the same for all the three batches see the fun part about this is all the three batches will run in parallel so what it means is let's say tuesday i teach you a topic called as cost management as part of 10 a.m batch in the morning so it means the same topic will be again repeated in the evening at uh, 8 p.m est timing it means the same topic will be covered third time in a day at 10 30 p.m est in the night so basically we teach you a topic three times a day and we do this for sake of revision we believe in revision i insist students to attend all three batches if not three at least two some students what they do is they attend 10 a.m and 8 p.m as a combination some students 10 a.m. and 10.30 p.m. as a combination. Some students, 8 p.m. and 10.30 as a combination. And also this gives you the flexibility of the schedule. So that is one day can come in the morning, one day can come in the evening, one day can come in the night. Let's say Friday night you have some plans, no problem. You can come in the morning. You can keep shifting the batches on daily basis. It will not have any effect anyways. The topic covered is the same in all the three batch timings. Thanks for watching videos. For registration, you can contact us at 770-777-1269 uh, and also this would be the UK number. You can also contact us at uh, training at h2kinfosys.com or h2kinfosys at gmail.com. Once again, thank you so much for watching the video.